about uh, nine o'clock last night. I'm trying to get my kids to bed so I can actually pay attention to the world. And then mm-hmm. I, I look at my phone. And I'm like, oh, what the hell's going on at the Staples Center? And I still call it the Staples Center. I'm sorry, the crypto arena, wha- whatever. I mean, it's Staples. It's Staples. Thank you, Mikey. And just, I said, guys, let's all go. They're like, mom, it's bedtime. I'm like, let's go watch this game. <laughs> and we just watched an absolute LeBron clinic. Just a clinic. We watched that incredible run that the Lakers put on. And really, I mean, let's face it, LeBron put on a 39-16 to 16 run to close out the fourth. I mean, I'm, I always say to TJ, let me, TJ, keep me straight on the numbers because God knows I'm not a numbers person. Math scares me. And I am. <laughs> and I said, TJ, keep me honest here. But uh, a 21 point fourth quarter comeback by the Lakers to beat mm, the clip joint. Lakers. A 19 to 3 run in four minutes. It seemed like all yeah. LeBron was doing was dominating. Now, the other thing I pointed out to TJ was, and, and you know, we talked about Daniel Thice coming out to guard him on the perimeter. Mm-hmm. And and all LeBron would do is like look at him like, really? <laughs> this is what you're giving me? And just that classic step back and boom. Boom. It was a thing of beauty. 34 points for LeBron, 19 in the fourth quarter, five threes, 13 of 21. You guys, it was and, and you know what what I loved about watching this game last night. And you know, I've been I've when I've sat in this chair before, sometimes I've said like he's not my favorite guy to cover. In the world, I, I I appreciate everything about who he is as a player, but I you know. I uh, I watched last night and I thought, how does he still have the energy to do this night after night? Now let's not forget they are the ninth seed. A lot of excitement, a lot of frenzy after that last night. He can't play like that all the time, and yet they need him to. To be relevant, but wow, Chris watching him sit back and launch, penetrate at will, doing whatever he wanted, and then guarding Kawhi Leonard for half the game. I don't know. It was a thing of beauty. It's fun. My feelings about LeBron are kind of whatever, TJ. I mean, but let's let's appreciate what we're watching. Absolutely. It's a a guy in his 20th year. Uh, He's going to be 40 this coming season, uh, later this year, and it's, you know, it's, it's Tom Brady stuff. It's it's stuff that you're not supposed to see. Guys this age aren't supposed to do it uh, at this level. Uh, the problem for the Lakers is it's going to take this kind of effort from LeBron every single night to keep them in the playoff hunt, to keep them in the play-in round, to keep them in the – try to get them into the top six. And, and that's a problem if we're just talking about yeah. from a basketball standpoint because I, I don't think that this type of production – uh, night in and night out is sustainable for him. You know that he needs some help, which is why he was kind of hanging at the at the trade deadline to get some guys in there. But just to sit back on a Wednesday night and and kind of watch this performance, I know it sucks. TJ, you're a Clipper fan; they blew a huge lead, but you got to be like, damn, that was unbelievable to watch. Yeah, I mean, I, I got this. This is just me personally. You know, so many times we 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 pick and choose the players that we love to watch, and then we'll be like, oh, I don't like this guy, or I don't like that team, and you let those biases kind of take you away from like just overall good basketball. Mm-hmm. And I used to be like that with Kobe and the Lakers. I, I disliked the Lakers so much that I didn't really appreciate Kobe and what was going on right down the street from me every day. And so I told myself at a point that like. After I realized that, I was never going to be that way with another player. So I I do. I appreciate and I understand historically what we're seeing with LeBron James. This man's about to eclipse the 40,000-point plateau. These are numbers you're never going to see again. Like, it's just never going to happen. Scoring record will never be broken. No one's going to be able to be as good for such a sustained period. And like you said, Chris, he can't do it every night. But those nights when he is able to reach right. into the bag exactly. and, and 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 make it happen, it's it's kind of special. You, you know, even when he's doing it against you know your favorite squad. Mm-hmm. But it it was just like one of those moments where you know, Susie, once the momentum turns, got to the four minute mark. Anthony Davis is at the line. He makes two foul shots. He ties the game. Clippers miss. LeBron comes down, hits Rui Hachimura, hits a three, puts him up, and that was pretty much it. But you could feel the tide just change. Yeah, the Clippers coach, Ty Lue, basically played Captain Obvious. He was like, you just can't let LeBron get hot. And it's like, really? <laughs> yeah, no I kidding. mean, <laughs> you, you just can't let LeBron get hot. Yeah, obviously. 40 points away from 40,000. Has the player even been born? 
who can come close to that. Does the NBA need to change the court and the shape of the court and push the line back or forward or whatever to have a player come close to this? We are watching history. By the way, LeBron at 39, I, I was doing a little research. Don't don't get scared. Uh, fifth in the league in minutes played. And, and that goes back to what you were saying, Chris. And that's about keeping your body in the greatest of shape a la TB12. How does he do it night after night? How does he have the energy? And what does he do? And can I have some? Because something <laughs> is working. Here's LeBron James after the game. Just in the zone. I mean, <clears throat> um, I know we, we've kind of heard this, you know, what, what it feels like to be in the zone, you know, in our, in our sport. And um, that's just a feeling. Um, when you feel like everything that you put up is, is, is going in. And, you know, with the, you know, for me, I just kept it, I kept it consistent. I wasn't taking LOI shots. Um, I stayed in the course of the offense. Um, when I was able to get the switches, I was able to give myself some space and get a couple more looks. You know, so my teammates did a great job of continuing to find me, you know, and then I just try to dictate the tempo, dictate the game, you know, as we started making a run for it and getting the game closer and closer and closer. Um, so, you know, it was just a zone that you just can't really describe it. You, you wish you could stay in it forever, but obviously it checks out, you know, as the game ends. But, you know, during it, you don't, you don't feel anything. You just, just have a superpower, I feel. Then you got to wonder how he feels the next morning when he wakes up after that, right? <laughs> And he's well, going to go back. And he it's the Wizards tonight. He's one of those chamber, chambers, so he probably didn't feel anything. Hyperbaric? Yeah. yeah. So he's got the Wizards tonight, I believe, at the downtown Hoops Dojo. And he's I have a feeling. Set out, right? Dojo. Th- does th- is this a load management game, do you think? <laughs> it feels like it. it I mean. Like, it has all the makings <laughs> of one. Darvin, new phone who dis, right? I mean, like, might take the night yeah, off. Yeah, I'm just going to stay home tonight. Your 49-year-old put in work last night. He might deserve a bit of a day off. It's a little crazy. Here's Darvin Ham after the game talking about LeBron James just marveling at what he saw. Man, everybody's just pushing him on, cheering him on. You know, he uh, had to take the the cape tucked under his seat on the bench, I guess. <laughs> it was time for him to whip it out. And uh, he, he definitely did that, put the cape on, um, and just got aggressive and got in a good rhythm. He's been shooting the ball, you know, extremely well this whole entire season. And that was just another case of it. You know, once he got in rhythm and, you know, with his playmaking skills, he sets the tone with his three, with his shooting and, 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 and going downhill. But then once they start scheming and trying to hit and double team late, he was able to pick him, pick him apart with the pass. And that's just who he is. Yeah, James single-handedly outscoring the Clippers 19-16 in the final frame, including five for eight from three with four assists. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.